In the previous video, we started building a larger editor window with the Odin Inspector. The goal was to build a window that could be the game manager and give easy and fast access to many of the game settings. This is intended as a functional improvement over sifting through the hierarchy while at the same time this editor window could add new functionality to improve the workflow. So far, we've been able to build up the main structure to the window, but we haven't added much content to it. In this video, we're going to create a generic reusable class to display scriptable objects. It'll make use of the Odin menu tree, as well as add buttons and functions that will allow us to easily create, edit, and delete instances of those scriptable objects, all from inside the same window. These videos are intended less of a follow along style tutorial, since editor windows are highly project dependent and more of an example of what can be created with some explanation of how to do so. So like I said, I want to create a reusable class. This will make it quicker to create our editor windows, easier to add new types of scriptable objects, and will take less effort to maintain with just one class for displaying all the scriptable objects. This class, of course, could be used to inherit from if a particular category of scriptable object needs a particular custom functionality. This allows creation of the editor window through composition rather than having to create entirely new code for emerging classes. I'll call this reusable class draw selected and give it a generic parameter. I'll also restrict the parameter to be a scriptable object like so. The class will be needing three fields. The first is of type T, and this is going to be the scriptable object that is selected in the menu tree and will be displayed in the window. This is followed by two string fields. One will be used to give a name to the newly created instance of the scriptable object, and the other will store a path to be sure that the newly created instances are saved in the correct place. Note that I'm leaving the path variable private, as this will be set by a function that we'll create in just a bit. Of course, this isn't the only way to do it, but rather just the way I chose to do it. With the fields created, we can then add a few attributes to the fields. On the selected variable, I'll add an inline editor so the inspector for the scriptable object is drawn in the window. Then on the name for new field, I'll shorten the label width, set the property order to a negative value to ensure that it's at the top of the window, and then add a couple attributes for organization. Note that the color group is a slightly modified version of the color foldout group that we made in an earlier tutorial and is not built into Odin. This attribute and its associated drawer cause a colored box to be drawn around the enclosed fields. We may want to add the ability to create a new instance of the scriptable object from the editor. We'll do this with a new function called create new. First, we want to check that a name for the new instance exists. If the name is empty, I'll stop as I don't want to create unnamed scriptable objects. If you were working on a team or had a larger number of scriptable objects, it might also be worth including a check for duplicates to avoid possible overriding of data. Next, we can create the instance of the scriptable object and assign a name. We then need to check the value of the path variable. If for some reason the path is empty, we can use a path that will place the scriptable object in the root asset folder. With the scriptable object instance created, we need to create a new asset in our project and force Unity to save any unchanged assets. The last step in this function is to reset the name for new variable to an empty string, which sets up the window to create another scriptable object. The final piece of this function is the addition of a few Odin attributes. I'll add in a horizontal group, create a button, and give the button a little color. We're looking pretty good, but it would also be nice to be able to delete the selected scriptable object directly from the editor window. This allows almost complete management of the scriptable objects from this one window. To do this, we can create another function. Inside the function, we first need to check that the selected variable is not null meaning that we have selected something from the current menu tree. If we have selected an object, we need to get the path of that object, delete the object, and then save the changes to the assets in our project. To finish the function, we can add the same attributes as we did to the create new function, but with a different color. To finish off the class, we need two more functions. The first will set the selected variable, which will allow the drawing of that object's inspector. This function will take in an object variable, check to see if the object is the correct type, and then set the selected variable. The reason we need to check the type is because the menu tree will not always have the same type of object in it. This will occur when we use the enum toggle buttons to change what is being displayed. 
The last function is simple and just sets the value of the path variable and we'll make use of this when we initialize the editor window. With our draw selected class complete, let's head back to our editor window code to make use of this newly created class. Our first step is to add a variable for each type of scriptable object that needs to get displayed. The type will use our newly created draw selected class with a corresponding generic parameter for the given type. We also need to create a new instance for each of these variables. It is these instances that will be displayed in the editor window. With that done, I've chosen to hard code location paths for each different type of scriptable object. While not a fancy way to do it, it seemed like the simplest solution. These paths need to get passed into corresponding draw selected objects. This can be done by overriding the initialize function and then calling set path on each of the objects, like so. At this point, we've added functionality, but none of it will show on our editor window, as we still need to tell the window what to draw in the Odin menu tree. To do this, we can insert a switch statement to the function build menu tree. We can then remove the cases from the switch statement that don't need a menu tree. And for the cases that do need a menu tree, we need to add the function tree.addAllAssets at path. We can then give the menu tree a label, a path where to find the assets, and finally, the type of object it should load into the menu tree. This is all well and good, but it does bring up another problem. The function build menu tree is only called once. So when the enum value changes, the menu tree won't change. To get a new menu tree, we can call force menu tree rebuild, but that is a somewhat slow process and we don't want to do it every frame. One solution is to create a new function that gets called when the enum value changes. We can call this function by using an on value change attribute on the enum. If we put the function call for force menu rebuild directly into the state change function, the window will work, but it will throw an error. This comes from updating the window content while the window is being drawn, which is a potential issue with all editor windows and is not Odin specific. So to deal with that issue, rather than directly call a function, we can use a boolean to indicate that the menu tree needs to get rebuilt. Then in the onGUI function, we can check the value of that boolean and if the current event is of the type layout. The layout event is when the content of the window can get changed without throwing errors. If both are true, then we can call force menu rebuild and reset the value of the boolean to false. This results in the window getting updated whenever the value of the enum is changed and it does it in such a way as to keep Unity happy. If we let Unity compile, and test our window, we can now see that the menu trees are being built correctly and the content in the menu trees corresponds to the value of the enum. But our custom class that we created still isn't being displayed. So let's fix that. To do that, we need to add more targets in the getTargets function. We need to add a target for each value of the enum. For the values that I'm not ready to draw yet, I'll set the target to null, but for the values that use scriptable objects, I'll add a target of the instance of the draw selected class that we created above. Do note that I'm adding the targets in the same order as the enum. This is going to let us take advantage of the numerical value of the enum, as well as allowing us to simplify our code. With the targets all set, the next step is to tell the window which target to draw. And we do this in the draw editors function. In the switch statement, all the cases that use scriptable objects we need to add the function setSelected for the corresponding instance of drawSelected. This function will take in the selected value from the menu tree so that it can be drawn. However, if you were to test the code at this point, you'd find that it still doesn't work as expected and we need to add one more line. Below the switch statement, we need to tell the window which editor to draw. In this case, we can cast the enum value to an integer and use that value as the index for the function drawEditor. This will cause the correct instance of draw selected or the correct target to be drawn. If we test our code now, we can see that the selected instance is displayed in the window. We can also see and test the buttons to create a new instance or delete a selected instance. It's worth pointing out that what's being drawn in the editor window for each scriptable object is the same as in the inspector. What this means is that any attributes or formatting that apply to the inspector will also apply automatically to the editor window. Once again, this is an example of Odin building the final results through composition 
rather than a large singular class that tries to do everything. This fact alone makes creating editor windows so much easier with Odin than trying to do it with just Unity. In our next video, we'll build up another generic reusable class to display managers that are seen objects. This will have the same advantage of generic classes used for displaying scriptable objects, although we won't be making use of the Odin tree in those cases. So we hope that was interesting or better yet, useful for your project. And until next time, happy game designing.